Welcome back to Carrying Creature Feature. Tonight's electrifying tale promises to be a scream. With voice actor Jeremy B. and story by Shane Sellers, I present Claws of the Grizzly. Viewer discretion is advised. The wind howled through the barren trees, composing an eerie symphony with the rustling leaves as we sat parked on the edge of a desolate country road, shrouded in darkness. My colleague, Mark, and I had settled in for a quiet night, the glow of the interior lights of the truck illuminating our snacks of gas station coffee and donuts. Mark was a seasoned veteran in our profession, his rugged appearance a testament to the years spent battling the elements. He often boasted of having seen it all, but the anxiety in his eyes on this night betrayed his nerves. I, on the other hand, was the newcomer still adjusting to the harsh realities of field work. Where are you going for vacation? I broke the silence, reaching for my lukewarm coffee. Vacation? Shit, any place is better than this, Mark replied. I heard good things about Crescent Cove. There's a light phenomena like the Aurora Borealis, and people throw these massive beach parties. Max exhaled, as if contemplating his next words, and then spoke. I also heard people go missing there and never show back up. The dispatcher's voice crackled through the radio, a fragile connection to the outside world. Truck four, he instructed. You're the closest crew. Head down Reed Parkway and inspect the back roads for a downed or damaged line. The power's been out for hours and the residents are growing restless. Mark lifted the radio receiver to his mouth and spoke. Roger that dispatch, truck four en route. Then with a raised eye, he looked at me. So much for sunny beaches, huh? With a resigned sigh, we secured our tool belts, gathered our equipment, and ventured down the narrow, winding roads of Reed Parkway. Moonlight intermittently pierced the thick canopy of trees, casting eerie, dancing shadows that played tricks on our senses. It was the kind of night that sent shivers down your spine, even when you tried to convince yourself it was merely your imagination. In the darkness, a spark of blue energy erupted from the sky. There it is. The Transformers acting up, Mark exclaimed with a weary tone. Well, at least we're earning overtime tonight, I remarked, attempting to find a silver lining. Mark picked up the radio receiver. Dispatch, this is truck four. We've located the issue. Sending GPS coordinates now. Roger, truck four. What seems to be the issue? Dispatch, looks like a transformer is out. Gonna have the rookie climb it. Can you roll truck five with a replacement transformer? Roger, truck four. Rolling truck five. Uh, ETA, one hour. Approaching the towering utility pole, Mark's voice cut through the silence. Jim, you go up. I'll keep a watch down here. Something doesn't feel right about this place. What do you mean doesn't feel right? I exclaimed. Not sure, just feels off. Ah, must be the coffee, Mark replied. You gotta be kidding me, I said, shaking my head. We both disembarked from the service truck and began donning our protective gear and tools. I strapped on the buck squeeze and fastened a pair of sharp boot spikes known as gaffs. Once equipped, I wrapped the buck squeeze around the pole, leaned back to remove the slack from the strap, and securely anchored the gaff into the wooden pole. My heart beat in sync with each cautious step as I ascended some 40 feet into the air. You know what you're doing, rookie? Mark said, watching from below. Does a bear shit in the woods? Upon reaching the malfunctioning transformer, a guttural growl echoed from below, sending a shiver down my spine. My flashlight beam revealed Mark, frozen in terror. A monstrous silhouette emerged from the darkness. Illuminated by the pale moonlight, it was a massive grizzly bear, its fur unkempt, its eyes gleaming with malevolent intent. Mark! Get to the truck! I shouted, my voice quivering with fear. Mark screamed in terror as he raced to the passenger side of the service truck. The grizzly quickly overpowered him, forcing him to the ground with its massive form. Mark struggled to rise, but the grizzly's strength was overwhelming, snapping his right arm like a twig. In an instant, the bear's jaws clamped onto Mark's neck, pinning him against the ground and the truck's wheel. 
A gush of crimson blood sprayed into the night. I watched in horror as my friend, a man who had faced countless dangers in our line of work, was overpowered and dragged into a ditch by the claws of the ruthless beast, his cries for help forever silenced. Trapped at the summit, I was rendered powerless, a mere spectator to the gruesome spectacle unfolding below. The grizzly, driven by a primal bloodlust, turned its attention toward me and began to circle the pole with calculated menace. Its ferocious roars echoed through the night, a chilling symphony that blended with the acrid scent of fear and the metallic tang of electricity that hung heavily in the air. I tightened the straps of the buck squeeze and dug my spikes deeper into the pole. The grizzly stood on its two hind legs, reaching toward me with its giant claws, its blood-stained snout sniffing the night air. After a few moments, it smashed against the pole, shaking me back and forth. The power of its aggression was immense, sending splinters of wood flying in different directions and cracking the ground at the base. As the heavy shroud of despair threatened to envelop my senses, an eerie silence hung in the air, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves in the night breeze. It felt as though the weight of the darkness itself was pressing down on me, suffocating my hope. But just when it seemed that all was lost, a low, distant rumble began to reverberate through the stillness, like a faint promise of salvation cutting through the night's tension. The sound grew steadily louder, drawing nearer with each passing moment. It was the unmistakable, comforting noise of a service truck, its engine growling with purpose. Relief surged through me like a tidal wave as I watched the truck's headlights gradually penetrate the inky blackness, slicing through the obscurity like a beacon of hope. The harsh glare of the headlights revealed the formidable silhouette of the grizzly bear, momentarily dazed by the sudden intrusion of light. With a menacing growl, it swiftly retreated into the protective embrace of the looming woods, its massive form disappearing among the trees. As the truck came to a halt nearby, two figures emerged. In the glow of the headlights, I could clearly make out their faces, and my heart swelled with gratitude and recognition. It was Steve and Lisa from Truck 5, two workers whose presence at that moment felt nothing short of miraculous. With voices filled with concern and urgency, they shouted up to me, their words echoing through the forest. Hey, Jim! What's happening up there? Their familiar voices were a lifeline, a reminder that I was not alone in this dire situation. Stay back! I cautioned, my voice trembling. There's a grizzly! Be careful! Steve and Lisa approached cautiously. We'll help you descend, Steve offered, reaching for his flashlight. Help, Mark! He's over there in the ditch! I think he's hurt badly, I said, pointing to the area where I had seen the grizzly drag Mark. Mark's hurt! Get on the radio and call for an ambulance, Steve said, turning to Lisa. But before anyone could react, the grizzly launched itself at them, its savage assault swift and brutal. Chaos reigned as the colossal beast tore its massive claws into Steve's face, sending teeth and flesh flying into the night air. His body instantly folded under the weight of the grizzly. Lisa stood frozen, watching the bear rip at Steve's limp body. Then, with a swivel of its massive, blood-soaked head, it turned its eyes toward her and grunted. Throwing Steve's mangled body to the ground, the bear rose two feet and roared. Lisa began to back up, but slipped against the loose gravel of the road. The bear, seizing the moment, pounced on her. I couldn't do anything but watch as the grizzly thrashed at Lisa, dragging her body into the wood line, the echoes of bones being crunched and flesh being torn reverberated through the night. I clung to the pole, my heart pounding and mind racing. Dawn was on the horizon, casting a feeble light on the harrowing scene below. Exhausted and terrified, I knew I had to make a desperate escape. 
Perched precariously atop the electrical pole, I clung to the narrow platform, a set of insulated cutters in one hand and rubber gloves tightly hugging the other. The murderous grizzly continued to prowl below, its predatory instincts undeterred by my temporary sanctuary. The distant hum of the live electrical wire nearby held the key to my salvation. My trembling hands were slick with sweat as I carefully cut through the insulated covering of the electrical wire. The tension in the air was palpable as sparks danced around my gloved fingers, and I could feel the pulse of electricity coursing through the wire. Fear gnawed at the edges of my resolve, but there was no turning back now. With the wire freed, I took a deep breath and began my descent down the pole, every movement deliberate and calculated. My nerves were on edge, and my legs quivered with uncertainty as I descended inch by inch. Then, in a moment of sheer panic, my foot slipped, and I plummeted to the ground below. Pain coursed through my body as I hit the earth, the impact stealing my breath and momentarily disorienting me. A hot, stinging sensation welled up from my left foot as I looked down to see a long wood splinter sticking out. Bile reached from the back of my throat as I watched blood begin to flow from the wound. The grizzly wasted no time. Charging toward me with a guttural roar, its jaws gaping wide in a deadly display of fury. Summoning every ounce of strength and resolve, I scrambled to my feet, clutching the live electrical wire. My rubber-gloved hands quivered with anticipation as I swung the wire towards the charging beast. Electricity surged from the wire, enveloping the grizzly in a blinding, crackling arc. The grizzly's mighty frame convulsed in agony as the electrical current coursed through its body, an otherworldly roar of anguish filling the night. I could hardly believe my eyes as the beast collapsed to the ground, smoke rising from its singed fur. I stood there, panting and trembling, the live wire still crackling with energy in my hand. The grizzly lay motionless, its reign of terror brought to a sudden and shocking end. The forest, once a place of darkness and dread, was now eerily silent, save for the fading echoes of the grizzly's final roar. This has been a Carrion Creature feature production. If you enjoyed our grizzly story, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more terrifying tales. Until next time, remember to not feed the wildlife. <laughs>